Hey, good morning. It's another frozen weather meum here. I did this one on a flat set. I uh, I can't uh, approve the flat set anymore. Uh, we always worry about uh, scent control, and I I, uh, I know the dirt hole gr is a great set, and I recommend running about 40% dirt holes, and the balance them should just be flat sets or blind sets, I think. Uh, but I see these guys on YouTube, and they're doing these great little demos of the perfect uh, dirt hole. Um, and they're scratching that earth up, man. Every time you scratch that dirt, it's making an unnatural scent. So I can't stress it enough, man. You got to keep this simple. When you walk up to that spot, you want to put a trap down. That is a scent-free spot. If you could just get a trap bedded in there and move out of there without dropping a, a man, disturbing anything... I mean, that's a great set, and that's a flat set, and, and the fox is not going to be afraid of that like he would be if he smelled something uh, human scent, or even just something that's awkward. It just doesn't seem to make, it doesn't make sense, this is all scratched up over here, but I don't smell a fox, you know, scratch paw, you know that little paw on the bottom of those dog's feet that they walk on? You know, those are, those leave scent, and so if a fox scratches it up, it leaves scent, and a fox knows that, so if he smells that scratched up spot with no fox on it or something he starts to wonder what it is it's just a moment of uh, hesitation if you will but run these flat sets and uh you know you'll have success with them I, I i can't stress it enough a flat set is as good as a dirt hole set when done right uh, so just take your time learn how to do them and uh punch them in uh at least 60 percent should be flat sets of some sort or blind sets but Anyways, Pennsylvania me, I'm here sitting in the background. I'm really proud of it. It's a beautiful fox. Probably one of the better ones I got this year, and I'm just glad you're out here with me on the line. All right, I will see you out there, and I hope your sheds stay full of fur. <laughs> see you out there. Huh? No. No, I'm good. So I'm just going to show you something an old-timer taught me once. Said if you catch a fox there on the fox line when you're making sets, this is a really good idea. Bring them over here and just work them there into the corn stalk, the grass, the fields, or whatever. The idea is to make some fox scent. Now, I'm, I try to rub it all around. So you have to put all the scent down here, all the tongue, the pee, or anything like that, to try and pull them and take it that a fox was here. Or you can actually bring a fox here. And I tell you, they might come over and they smell that scent and say, I think a fox was here. And that's because there really wasn't. So they're hesitating. You don't want to avoid that as much as you can. But, by doing this, I'm actually bringing the fox over. This proves to them that a fox really was here. And now the scent's all over this spot. So I'm going to make my set right there. It's going to be a flat set on the, one of those corn stalks. But that's the tip for the timer. I'm going to pass it all the way. Oh, I got mud in my eye from setting a, a trap back here. So me and my daughter were very, very excited because we caught our most favorite kind of catch whenever we're out here checking our traps, and I'll show you what it is in just a second. But this is my lovely daughter, Kara. She's my trapping partner. Kara, why don't you tell us all about what's in the trap? What is it? Tell us. <laughs> Say what's in the trap. What's in it? A skunk. A skunk! Oh, no! Hey. Skunks are one of those critters that have a cool looking fur and nobody wants to mess with it. And I can't say that I'm any different. I think they look beautiful. I think they're cool little critters, but I ain't interested in taking one home with me. So. <laughs> it is what it is. We got a skunk this morning. We'll get it cleared out of the trap here. Uh, they're hard to release. Uh, I wouldn't mind just letting them go, but it is what it is. Here we are. We'll figure out what we're going to do. All right, Kara. All right, we'll see you. This is exactly what we do not like to see in our fox and coyote sets. The old Mr. Skunk. Uh, he looks like he is uh, not comfortable with me at all, and he does not have a very nice fur on him either. Some guys would actually try to collect these and uh, harvest the essence from them and uh, skin them out and, and deal with all that 
about fur price to low this year and he's not a very nice fur i gotta tell you i'm probably just gonna dispatch him and uh i'll probably come back tomorrow and clear the trap there he is we'll take care of him hey we got ourselves a water coon i didn't have him out there in the water it's a little dog proof which i can't say enough about the dog proof traps i think they're just phenomenal talk about uh uh, uh, not, you know, limiting what your catch is going to be. Uh, you can certainly catch skunk, and I've even seen a fox caught once in these things, but they are nearly dog-proof, dog-proof traps. Uh, they just do a, a tremendous job. If you put one out, you pretty much know what you're going to get in it. You can target a raccoon and get a raccoon almost every time. The, the, the way the trigger's set up, they can only be set off uh, by the way a raccoon's fingers can curl down at the end. Uh, sometimes you'll get some non-target, but almost always raccoon. But anyways, he, he had that dog proof. He was set up here on the bank here. I have a log drag on it. He managed to get it over into the water and took it about 10 feet. But there he sits, just waiting for me, and I'm tickled pink. So today we've got a fox, a skunk, and now, number 20, Mr. Raccoon. So I'm just tickled pink today. It's been a good day in the line, and I have a couple more traps to set. I'll see you out there. God bless every one of you. And I'll see you on the, I'll see you on the trap line. Take care.